Hey guys, still there. Let's make another addition to the submarine as it is. It has the torpedo tubes, it has quite a few sensors, it has the AA missiles, however, it is not fantastic at detecting air threats. And the sonar, especially if I want to switch the bow sonar back to a passive system, which I really want to do, I want to make this thing as undetectable as possible, or as stealthy as possible, in that case, we're going to need some sort of additional system to allow me to detect threats that are, let's say, at the surface level or above. And for that, we're going to be using buoys. If you have never seen these things, missile radar buoys and missile sonar buoys allow the deployment of specific systems, being either sonar buoys, which are helpful for detecting surface or subsurface threats, or radar buoys, which are really helpful for detecting air threats and um, surface threats. Once those are active, you're going to be uh, pretty much done. So, let's make sure that we can actually use these systems. I'm going to go into the sub, and we're first going to uh, head into the control room, the control center here. What you need to do is go back to the main system and add a connector. That's just the one thing that we're going to be using. Then, I'm going to be adding um, two radar buoys, missile radar buoys as they're called. Now beware that these things take up quite a bit of processing. They need two units of general processing power per unit. And this means that I might not have enough processing power at the moment. Now I do actually have enough. I'm able to process detection of five detectors, of which zero are trackers. Detectors need nine and a half points of power. This means the detection systems are running at 100% of maximum capacity. So this means that I don't need additional general processing cards. So, let's have... Uh, actually... Um, currently I don't have any radar buoys, that's why they're not active. So I will be needing some additional processing cards to get the processing or general processing power up to 10, or at least more than 9.5. So that's the... let's say that's the receiver end of the missile buoy or the radar buoy. Now while I do have some room in my control center, I want to keep this thing um, just that, a control room. However, in some of the rear compartments I do have some room left. Especially in the engine compartment, I still have plenty of room to add one of those systems. So we're going to be doing some surgery on this room here. Let's get the sub out of the water so I can have a slightly better look. I think it should be be about here. Yep, this is the engine compartment. Now what we're going to be doing is adding a few systems. You don't need much. You're going to be adding a simple missile system. So we're only going to get a launch pad section of one. That's it. No more. Add a gantry. And considering that this thing is below decks and I wanted to be able to fire those buoys up fast I'm going to be adding... come on, where are you? Um, I'm going to be adding, let's say, two of those ejectors. Now you can go with these things on two sides. I'm only going to add one on one end. I don't need particularly more detection than that. Let's add a controller to make sure that this thing can actually be controlled. Let's add an AI system. And finally, of course, as is obligatory, the AI receiver, or the wireless receiver. Then we're going to edit this tiny missile that we have over here, which I don't think he really even deserves the title of missile. We're going to be adding two things. One is a ballast tank, and the other one is down here. It's the radar buoy. The radar buoy means that this thing can detect above water vehicles if the missile is above water or floating on the surface. It'll report these detections back to the vehicle that fired it. That's exactly what we want it to do. We want this thing to get up to the surface and give me information on any kind of air threats or surface threats. You can be adding a ballast tank to make sure that this thing can float and if you want to turn this thing into a... Uh, well I usually call them flying fish it's something that has positive buoyancy, so it's going to be jumping out of the water. Mean, uh, make sure that the buoyancy change is 5, if you want to do that. Otherwise, you can just have it at 0, and the thing is going to be floating on the surface. I'm going to be showing you both incidents. 
Now, I actually don't even need to do that because it's just one missile. Finish this off with another block. Keep the compartment watertight. And that's it. Now, I'm going to be manually controlling this, at least for now, to show you what it does. So, let's say control group 5. Back into the water. Let's give her a bit of speed. Start to dive. And the depth desired is set to minus 94 and a half. So that should be plenty. See, all air pumps should be switched off at the moment. Where's the air pump in the engine department? There it is, switched off. Altitude minus 4. Is this section flooding as well? Or is it? Ugh, oh, it's really hard to see. Come on, open up. I believe there is an air pump in here somewhere. Yep, there it is. Okay, we can reattach that. And the submarine is slowly diving. Emphasis on slow, because it's, <laughs> it's actually diving really, really slow. Set the gain a bit higher, see if it can dive a bit faster. Although, I don't really think so. Is this section flooded? Yep, also flooded. You know what, we're going to make the sub a bit heavier. This thing needs to be so heavy that it wants to dive all by itself. Let's add the mirroring right down the middle. And I'm going to be adding these lead blocks on the center of mass. Whoops, so much for my chair. I wasn't particularly using that anyway, but it's nice to have a chair, especially in adventure mode, where you can get knocked off of your ship. There, this should make the sub quite a lot heavier. Let's make it a completely lead keel. And you can see that the dive planes are struggling to keep the pitch at neutral. Depth currently minus 18, minus 19, minus 20. Yep, now we're actually going down at a decent speed. Thank you, lead blocks, for making my life easier. All right, I'm going to be launching one of those radar buoys. Actually, let's make sure I have... Where's my control center? Where is the control room? Here it is. Control, chair. That's the one that I knocked off the ship. Get in the chair. Here we are. Now, I'm going to be firing this lonely radar buoy. It's jumping up out of the water. It's just a bit high. That's because I added those two ejectors. It's perfect, though, because the higher the radar is, the more likely it is to get a good detection. And it's jumping down again. Unfortunately, due to all of its velocity, it doesn't actually perform that well at the moment. Its balance is currently negative, or it's currently neutral, which means that it won't particularly float to the surface all by itself. So this doesn't quite work now, does it? For that, we're going to need to come up with a slightly different design. We're going to need to come up with a slightly different setting here. I'm going to set the ballast tanks to have a buoyancy of 5. Fire another one. Again, it leaps out of the water because of all those ejectors added to the launch pad. In the meanwhile, my altitude is currently negative 70, minus 75, so it's going pretty well. Again, coming back into the water, and now it actually wants to float. It wants to jump out of the water because of all of that buoyancy. This thing is currently detecting anything that might be a surface detectant, or a surface uh, combatant, or aerial target. Now, if I look to my radar buoy receiver, it's currently tracking nothing, and its radar buoy is waiting to be deployed. This one has a currently deployed buoy, and is actually tracking something. So you can never have, in this situation, more than two, because I cannot have more than one buoy that is being processed by a missile radar buoy. Now, I'm going to be taking off this system, the wireless snooper, to show you what happens. Because what I'm going to be doing is killing off an air target by relying mainly on my radar buoys. So let's hand over the control to the submarine, at least of the weapon systems. 
And while the submarine continues to dive, which is a bit optimistic, it's diving a bit too far. Let's set this to 15 so it can look a bit further ahead. And we're going to be beaming in a monkey barrel. Now, the submarine doesn't know that it should be launching one of these. So we're going to need to add a little bit to that later on. It doesn't even know that there is a monkey barrel over it. Because a monkey barrel is a surface combatant or an aerial combatant and cannot be detected by passive radar. Or sorry, a passive... Oh, it's a passive radar system. That's not right. It should be a passive sonar system. There we go. Either way, it can still not see anything. Until I launch the radar buoy. Radar buoy hits the surface. The radar buoy now detects that there is a monkey barrel right over my head. And here come the missiles. One, two, three, four. Let's head back to control. Where we can now see that this thing is actually tracking a target. It's tracking a monkey barrel with a detection chance of 97%. So it has a good line on the target. Looks like I'm currently pretty far down the surface. But I'm getting the resources from the kill. That is if I would to have if I were to have resource storage. And the missiles are definitely going up. Missiles fired. One, two, three, four kills. And there we go. However, it's not quite working the way that I like it. Because the weapon system will only fire these radar buoys if it can detect something. And it can only detect something if it has some sort of eyes on the surface. So right now it won't actually fire at all. We're going to change that a bit. I'm going to take off the, adv uh, the, sorry, the local weapons controller. It doesn't do anything for me because it'll only fire these if it gets information that it has to fire the weapon system. Which it will never get. So I'm going to be f uh, firing these things periodically. And for that we're going to go to control. Automated control block. Add one of these. And tell the automated control block to um, activate if vehicle speed is greater than, let's say, uh, 3. 3 meters per second. If it's greater than that, I want you to fire a weapon system. But only the weapon system that's close to it. I don't want this thing to go trigger happy and fire more torpedoes every... Uh, something seconds. Radar buoys last about 60 seconds, so let's say that they have slight overlap, 55 seconds delay. So it's going to fire, 55 seconds wait, fire again. Fire the weapon systems. And let's see. Let's give this thing a test. Where are you? Test fire. No, it won't fire yet. That might mean that I have my thing too far away. Let's set it to 4. Nope. Are we still getting input from the existing radar buoys? Currently deployed. Yes, that's it. The radar buoys are still there. They're still available, which is the current reason why I cannot fire any more radar buoys. Now, there it's waiting to be deployed. So now I can go back to my controller, test it. And we should have another buoy hitting the surface soon. You'd think so anyway. For some reason it won't fire. Have I set this thing to fire? Fire weapon systems if speed is greater than 3. Check. Ah, right. It's going to fire after 55 seconds. Let's turn that into a no limit. And now it's firing too many. It has too great a range, so it's now actually affecting all of my air missiles, or anti-air missiles. I need to turn the range down a little bit. The radar buoy, at any rate, has hit the surface. You can see that those things rearm in little to no time. And my control center should be saying that it's now getting input from a buoy. Which means that it is hunting for targets. They're currently deployed on a missile and hunting targets. The other one is also hunting targets as it is still processing input from the previous radar buoy. So with this setup I will always have eyes on the surface 
I will always have eyes on the surface for detecting not only air threats but also surface ships that are currently too far away from my passive sonar systems to be detected. Or that might be too quiet for my sonar systems to be detected. It's not likely that that happens, but you never know. So let's spawn in a marauder. Let's see if it's get detected. It's not detected on the passive sonar. It's not detected on either passive sonar, but the radar has detected it. And the radar is saying, hey, dude, there's a target nearby. We need to hit that. There we go. It's tracking a marauder. Thanks to the radar buoy. So let's follow those missiles or those torpedoes in. For some reason, this thing has been able to detect me. And by the feeling of it, I'd say done a lot of damage. Similarly, I've done a lot of damage to him as well. But, I'm not sure why... No, I'm, I haven't actually taken any kind of damage. But the ship seems to be slightly too heavy, so I need to start working on reducing some of that weight. Anyway, that is it for this video. This is how you can use radar buoys to get a remote surface detection, or even air detection, without actually having to pop in a radar or uh, give off any kind of system or any kind of ping off by yourself. You can do the exact same thing with a sonar buoy. So that you fire one of those things, they actually detect for you, they send out the signals, you don't, and they're going to get detected and you won't. That's the idea of stealth. That's the idea of not getting detected and that's how I like my submarines to operate. So, I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please give it a like so I can help more people and reach more people. And I think that the next step is going to be to add some long-range surface or anti-surface missiles onto this submarine. But that's going to be in the next video. For now, hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Go build your submarine. Good luck and good hunting from the depths.